All right, so today we're going to learn about Alexander the Great and what he created, which is known as the Hellenistic culture. We call Alexander the Great because of all the different uh, accomplishments he had in his life, but we have to back it up a little bit to understand those accomplishments. So right here where you see the red arrow is Macedonia. It's located north of Greece. It has very rough terrain, no areas where they can grow food, and it's super cold. And the people who lived in that area lived in mountain villages instead of city-states like the Greeks. The Macedonians thought of themselves as Greeks. However, the Greeks looked down upon them as uncivilized foreigners. They said, you are not Greeks, you're Macedonians. Now this is Philip II of Macedonia. Good looking guy, right? So Philip is the king of Macedonia. He became king at age 23. And he starts to train all the peasants in Macedonia into a professional army. And he developed what was known as the phalanx, which is 16 by 16 men. And each soldier carried an 18 foot pike, which are um, like long spears. So you can see the picture below. So no matter which direction they were being attacked in, they were always protected by each other because they could switch directions very quickly. And they always had two rows of those pikes sending out at their enemies. He also came up with the concept of a cavalry, which is soldiers on horseback, which means they can move really, really fast. He wants to invade Greece, not to destroy or enslave the Greeks, but because he loves the Greeks and he wants to be one. So Athens and Thebes join forces to try and fight Philip's army, but Philip's army is way too powerful and they quickly defeat the Greeks. And this ends the Greek independence. Philip now controls all of Greece and all of Macedonia as their king. And he sets out to defeat the mighty Persian Empire, but he won't be able to do that because his bodyguard stabs him to death at his daughter's wedding. Talk about drama. Now, a couple years ago, Oliver Stone released a movie called Alexander. It's actually pretty historically accurate if you're interested in watching it, although this gentleman here is supposed to play Alexander, and this is what Alexander actually looked like, which is a little bit different. So Alexander takes over at age 20 after his father's death. Alexander had been taught by Aristotle. He learned science, geography, literature. So he's a very well-educated king, which was very uncommon at that time. Um, he was also very well trained by his father in military methods. So when his father died and he took over, the people of Thebes decided to try and rebel against him. And he killed all 6,000 of them to make sure everybody in Greece knew he was the king and nobody was going to mess with him. So, Philip wanted to conquer Persia, but never had the chance because he was killed. So Alexander sets out to Anatolia, which is present-day Turkey, with 35,000 troops. He's met there by 40,000 Persians that are led by Darius III. Um, Alexander's army attacks first. They use the phalanx method. They're very victorious. So then Darius responds with an army of 50 to 75,000 men, and the Macedonians break through that as well. Because remember, they only started out with 35,000. So this is pretty impressive. Darius flees the battle, and as a result, Alexander now controls Anatolia, which is a pretty big area. So he now has Macedonia, Greece, Anatolia. So next, Alexander puts his sights on Egypt, because Persia controlled Egypt. But as soon as Alexander walks into Egypt, the Egyptians are so happy to see him because they're not the Persians that they welcome him and they crown him Pharaoh right away. So he doesn't even have to do any battle. Now Alexander has control of Egypt and Macedonia and Greece and Anatolia. Next up is the Battle of Guagamela, which is in Mesopotamia. 250,000 Persians under Darius against Alexander's original force, and he launches his massive phalanx attack, followed by a cavalry charge, and the Persian lines just crumble. So yet again, Darius flees, and Alexander now has control of the entire Persian Empire, which, remember, was absolutely huge. So everything you see in red is Alexander's uh, empire. It's huge, and it's taken him less than 11 years to conquer this entire area. They start to make their way east to uh, chase Darius. They get to India and find out he was actually murdered by his own men because he kept fleeing the battles. So the, uh, Alexander's soldiers are exhausted. They are, have been traveling for 11 years. They've gone 11,000 miles. They want to go back home. And Alexander, one of the reasons he was known as great was because he listened to his soldiers. He slept amongst them. He fought amongst them. He ate amongst them. He acted as if he was one of them, not just the king. And so when they said, we're ready to go home, he said, okay, let's go home, which is why he's really loved. Unfortunately, right after he gets home, Alexander dies of a mysterious illness at age 32, which is really young, obviously. 
So he started at 20, and by 32, he's conquered the largest empire the world has ever seen. Doesn't get to enjoy it because he dies, probably from an infection um, from a battle wound. So now what? What's his legacy? So the empire was broken into three main territories that are going to last for hundreds of years beyond this. Um, and you can see the three main territories here on this map. Egypt is probably the biggest area that Alexander wants to keep under, or Alexander's empire keeps most of their power. And this idea of Hellenism, Alexander's dream of blending Egyptian, Persian, Greek, and Indian influences. And what that means is let's take the best ideas and the best parts of all of these massive cultures and blend them together and make the best culture in the world. Some of the things they accomplished, they built Alexandria, named after Alexander. It's the capital of his empire. And there's a 350-foot lighthouse. The first ever built lighthouse is, was there. Unfortunately, it was destroyed in a storm, so it's not still there. But he also developed a library with over 250,000 scrolls. Now, why that's important was every place that Alexander went and conquered and traveled to, he would make copies of every single scroll that he could find there. He would leave the copies for the people and take the originals with them, and then they were put in this massive library in Alexandria. So the best ideas, the best minds from all around the world he had conquered are all in one place, which is why people want to come to Alexandria, because they want access to all these scrolls. During that time, we have some great minds in Alexandria. Euclid is going to come up with the basis for geometry. I know you're all thrilled that he did. Archimedes uh, is going to estimate pi's value to be 3.14. And Hero is going to invent steam power, which is this invention over here to the right. So as a result of all this, Philip II and Alexander's conquest of the Greeks, the Egyptians, and the Persians Ideas would spread, cultures will combine in a way that we've never seen before. And after Alexander's death, the Greek civilization starts to decline. But what he's left behind, this idea of Hellenism, is going to develop into the most powerful empire we've ever seen, which is our next unit, the Roman Empire. All right, so that's it for today, kiddos. That's all you had to listen to. Remember, you have the day off tomorrow, but we are live, and I would love everybody to be there live on Friday. Uh, we're going to do some fun activities, get some easy points and some extra credit. So be there live this Friday. Bye, guys.